Hey everybody, Richard here with thewirelesshaven.com. Today, we are gonna go over the quad link antenna, built for the Invisigig, but also useful for cellular routers and any kind of modem with an SMA interior connection for the antennas. So the quad link antenna for the Invisigig, we just released, comes in this big giant box. If you're watching this, most likely you have one already. And if you don't have one already, what are you doing? Go to the site, wirelesshaven.com, get your quad link antenna. Now this antenna is, again, designed for the Invisigig to go inside of the antenna. This antenna is a 4x4 MIMO POE powered antenna. So there's no antenna cables, there's only one ethernet cable, which in our kit is included. The 50 foot outdoor rated solid copper ethernet cable. It is made to be installed long-term, good quality. Usually for most people, 50 foot is plenty of length. That's well below the maximum length for POE power. This thing can be put anywhere outdoors that you can get the best signal so that you can get four antennas in one place pointed at a cell tower with minimal obstructions. Sometimes uh, it can go through trees. It can actually deal with a lot of obstructions in general. Uh, the only time you're gonna have the most problems is if you have a solid obstruction like mountains, any kind of ground structure or solid concrete or steel structures. And even then, the panel style antennas like the quad link antenna deal very well with this because of its wide beam width and large collection element. So quad link antenna, when you get yours, you'll get this big box. If you got the full kit, we do sell this by itself, not in a kit. You'll open it up and inside you should have 50 feet of ethernet cable, outdoor rated. They do have these boots, but the ones that we have currently, they slide back or you can cut them off if you don't like them. These, this is a shielded outdoor rated jacket. These are solid. You can see the, you likely see the cable. It looks all chunky. Those are solid uh, 24 or 23 AWG, 23 AWG solid copper outdoor rated ethernet cable. These are category six cables, plenty for up to even 10 gigabits, more than you'll need. You also get in our kit, our Wi-Fi 72 watt PoE injector. This is to put PoE power into the ethernet cable from an indoor standard plug. Also comes with the cable for the injector. Currently, the Invisigig is not PoE powerable. So the kit comes with our Wi-Fi 3 amp 12 volt PoE step down splitter. It takes 48 volt PoE input and splits off the ethernet data with a 2.1 millimeter power plug. That's a 12 volt output, maximum of three amps. The Invisigig does not use near that much. It's plenty. You also get all the hardware, of course, required for your installation. And we also include most all the tools that you need, the only tool that you will need to include for yourself is a standard Phillips screwdriver. That's it. We include all the small little tools for everything else. All of our Wi-Fix antennas come with heavy duty mounting solutions with hardware made for outdoors. These are articulating mounts that can be aimed left to right as well as up and down. It has two different joints to articulate the mount. It can be flush mounted against a flat surface, or you can use the included U-bolt hardware to post or pole mount to that, like a J-pole or an expandable pole, a ladder, pretty much any form of pole post tubing that you can find that is less than roughly two and three eighths inch. And then of course the other side is flat for the back of the antenna. The antenna itself is a full four by four MIMO panel. It is a bit large and that's to include plenty of space inside for your Invisigig as well as for heat circulation. And the back of the enclosure is ribbed for maximum heat aspiration. You'll notice the back of the antenna has the bolt hole pattern that matches the mount. 
You also see on the video, it'll be hard to see, but on this top corner here, this is a ground reference plug. If you have a way to ground this entire installation, which I do recommend, and always check your local codes for the exact regulations on how you need to do that, you can ground it from the inside of the antenna all the way down to your bond. It also includes a level on the enclosure so that you can be sure that this is plumb and level for your installation. The bottom of the enclosure has an RJ45 bulkhead. This is so that you can plug in your ethernet cable for the PoE power and also comes with a SIM card gland so that you do not have to open this up to put your SIM card in or change your SIM card. This is a nano SIM slot SIM card gland. And we'll show you how to hook all this up right now. Okay, so to make this a little easier to see, I tilted the camera down, so you're not gonna be able to see my face the entire time. The case itself is sealed in such a way that when you first open it, you'll need to grab part of the corner here and the top. Usually what I like to do is just push up with my thumb or fingers while pulling the two pieces apart. See this? This way it breaks that seal. Sometimes it's really, really tight. So we want to pull that apart until it comes up. Now know that usually there's parts combined or attached between the back half and the top. Currently, the only thing that is there is a ground cable, but you don't want to, what you don't want to do is pull this completely sideways while one side is still sealed because you could bend the edges of this too much. You'll want to make sure that you bring it up and then pull the other part up, not over. Okay, make sure you go up with it. If it sticks together, you just need to kind of go along the open part and pull them apart. Now you'll see here that they are connected, but by a ground cable. Might be a little hard to see, but it's in there. The ground cable is attached to the back of the enclosure where I showed you there is a ground bolt hole in the back. You can see it much easier in person. Now they've got the extension taped to the back of the enclosure. That's so this doesn't get caught on anything in transit. Be careful not to apply any pressure to that cable in any way, shape, or form. The cable, the cable can break off or be pulled out. We just don't want to have to deal with that right at that point. There is also the tail for the RJ45 bulkhead where your ethernet cable will go in and this will go into our splitter here in a little bit. The antenna is actually two separate antennas inside this enclosure with two antenna cables per antenna set. They are cross polarized at 45 degrees. They actually match the shape on the top side of the antenna. So they are actually positioned as such, both top and bottom. So one antenna is here for two antenna pieces and one antenna is here for two. And you can see they're actually electrically separated as well. The ground can be placed on either one the cable is here. I actually don't like that. I'm going to move mine back here. If you'd like yours to be in place with the Invisigig, which will be placed here, you can just move it off to the side. I just don't like where it is right there. So I'm going to use my Phillips screwdriver and unscrew this. Grab this piece. Find another screw to place it in. Unscrew this. Move that screw to the other hole. And put it in place. And then put your ground piece into the new hole that you've created in a different location. For me, this clear space, though these aren't electrically connected, still puts a ground on the inside on the back plane of one of the antennas. And if you like, you can actually place a jumper between the two sides. This is the plate for the Invisigig installation. It should be loosely applied with four nylon insert nuts. 
the nylon inserts keep them from vibrating loose. If you can't take them off by hand like I just did, you can get some of the included hardware. There should be a seven millimeter wrench, combo wrench with a box end and, and an open end. Okay, that is the perfect size for this. If you'd like, if you have a socket set for the seven millimeter, that will work as well. You can gently loosen them, take these off. This plate then needs to come off and we're ready to put this onto our Invisigig. So I've got a brand new Invisigig here. And all we need out of our Invisigig box is the Invisigig itself. This is the newer style Invisigig. It has bolt holes on the back to match the holes in this plate. If you do not have the version with the bolt holes, you can use double-sided tape to apply the plate and the Invisigig together. All we need to do is align the holes in the back of the Invisigig with the holes in the plate. Take our bag of hardware. Make sure that there's no hardware inside this piece right here. Sometimes it goes down inside here or inside this end and you'll, you'll think you're missing things and it's actually in here. And we're gonna look for these shorter bolts. There are two size bolts. We want the shorter ones. The larger ones are for the mount. We do not need the washers. We just need the four smaller bolts. These are M6 bolts, standard for networking racks and so forth. The hardware does come with the kit. Feed the bolts down through into the inserts. Also included in the kit is a five millimeter hex wrench. Tighten these down gently. They don't need to be very tight, just snug. Once tight, we can now take this, drop it in place over the bolt holes on the back of the antenna. It fits right in place. These holes cut out in the back of the antenna are for the heads of the bolts on the back of our Invisigig plate. That drops right into place. We take our small nylon insert nuts from before and put one on each of our studs on the back plane of the antenna. Again, seven millimeter wrench, we include this. Take the wrench, tighten down the nuts. Do not over tighten these. You could pull the stud out of the back plane they only need to be set down snug just so this doesn't rattle around. This is not a load bearing thing. This is not very heavy. It does not need to be tight. And the nylon inserts on the nut will keep them from backing off. Once everything is tightened down, your Invisigig is nice and secured. Then we're gonna apply the antenna cables. The antenna cables are labeled A, B, C, and D. Those are going to go on to the Invisigig in the order in which the labels are for the Invisigig. A, B, C, D. Also note, these little fingers in here, you can pull the cables out of them and move them to a different set whichever makes your cables fit in this place the best. It is not important which one of those slots they go into. First one here, A. These you can finger tighten down. There is another small wrench included in the set 
If you'd like, you can use that to further secure the SMA connector together so that they're nice and tight. A, then we're going to go with B. C, last D. After installation, make sure that there's no odd kinks in your cabling. And there's no extra pressure on these connectors. If it seems like there's any pressure or kinks on them, try to rearrange until you feel satisfied that there's not going to be any damage or strange kinks in your cable. Now that we've done that, we're done installing the Invisigig. We've got it hooked up to our antenna. Now we need to apply our PoE splitter. So our Wi-Fix PoE splitter, all we need to do is plug our cable from our case into the splitter. Make sure that it clicks so that it's solidly in there. And then ensure that you plug in the Ethernet cable without too much twisting bind. You don't want anything really twisty or binding in there. Apply your Ethernet cable till it clicks. Make sure that it's solid. And then your power cable, the 2.1 millimeter barrel plug, into your power port, push it in all the way. Once you're sure that's all the way in, you can pull the cables around until they clear the seal of the case. You don't want that overlapping the seal. This can remain loose, it's not a big deal. You've got your ground, you've got your ethernet, power, everything's plugged in and solid, all your cable connectors are in place. Now we're gonna get our SIM card into the slot. This can damage this SIM extender. If you're not careful, please be careful with this. First, gently pull up the stickers that are holding it in place. And then open the bag that is placed in and carefully remove the extender from the bag. Now, this part's gonna be hard to film, but we're gonna do it anyway. As a close-up, we'll see that our extender card here has the metal pads on one side and not on the other. Our Invisigig SIM slot needs to have its pads facing down, not up, facing down. So we'll take our case, ensure that the, this does not go around that piece. We're going to turn it over and just set it on the other edge so that we can fit inside here. Do not go around the PoE injector. Make sure we go in front of it. And hopefully we can see this. But we're going to gently place the SIM card with the pads facing down. and then push all the way in till it clicks. Make sure that you hear that click. Once your SIM card is in, you do not want this cable to get pulled tight. So we'll, we'll check to make sure all of our connections are good. These cables are not overlapping the seal. And then we'll slowly lower our lid in place, aligning it with the edge to ensure that we have no overlap, nothing is open. Once it's fully set, we'll squeeze down the top, and then we're ready to put in our screws. Now that we have everything put together other than the screws, we'll take these screws, make sure that we get all six in place, Threads pointing down, our Phillips screwdriver. Sometimes you may want to go ahead and give that corner a squeeze and thread it all the way down. Once you start to feel it bite a little bit and give resistance, move to another screw and evenly 
seal the entire enclosure. Once you've gotten through each of them to be snug, go ahead and go back through and just give it a little extra. These do not need to be extremely tight. They only need to be snug. If you tighten them too much, you risk damaging the enclosure. Now that we have everything screwed down, bolted in place, this is an IP67 rated, completely sealed enclosure. These bulkheads have seals on them. There is a seal on the inside of the SIM card gland. Make sure that you thread that in properly when you put your SIM card in. It is very easy to cross thread. If for any reason your gland turns, you need to stop immediately, get a small set of pliers, and tighten the nut on this gland. You may want to check that before you seal it up because you'll need to put a wrench on the inside and then tighten the nut on the outside. If you cannot, you can also tighten it very gently from the outside, but it's much more difficult to do with the case closed. When you're closing the gland, you do not need to tighten this very tight. It only needs to be snug. There's a rubber seal in there that will do its job. This gland for the ethernet cable has its own seal, which is right here. Make sure that you do not lose the O-ring on the top part. That is necessary. We'll show you how to assemble this completely in just a minute. Now, before we go any further, the number one thing I always do before doing anything else is test the unit. Get your SIM card, place it into the SIM extender, metal pads facing towards the little logo or image, push it in until it clicks, then let go. You can test it by pushing in again until it pops out. I'll give you a closer view. Clicks in, looks flat, clicks out. Kind of hard to see. Out, in. With your SIM card in, now we can test our PoE injector, and we can make sure that we're getting a connection on our Invisigig. If this is the first time set up, setting up your Invisigig, I recommend that you do not put in the SIM card until you've set your settings, depending on what SIM card type you have, whether it be AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, home internet, hotspot plans, or any other kind of plan on that SIM card, you may wanna power it up first, access it from a PC or through your router, and ensure that you've got your settings set up first, and then put in your SIM card, reboot the unit, and then ensure that you get an internet connection before going further. You do not want to have this thing installed to go through all the trouble of putting this up on your house or way up high or anywhere else and then find out you didn't have a, something set up properly or that an internal cable came loose or even hopefully not but even broke before you put it up. We warrant this for three years. The Invisigig unit we warrant for a year. We will take care of you but it's better to find out that there's a problem before you get on a ladder or do anything else instead of installing and going through all the trouble and then having to go back up there and take it back down because there was a problem with your connection, problem with your SIM, problem with your system, problem with your antenna. We will support you. Please don't waste your time in installing this before testing. Very important. And I'm saying this from experience as well as customer support experience. It's very frustrating to go through the entire trouble of assembling, installing, placing this, getting it ready to aim, and then firing it up and finding out it doesn't power up, it doesn't read the SIM card, 
you didn't set your settings right, you didn't connect a connector right, anything like that. Very, very important. I repeat it for a reason. Test it on the bench before you install it. So, injector, power cable. Gigabit PoE injector has two ports on it. The port closest to the LEDs is labeled PND out. That's your power. That's going to your antenna. You're going to power over Ethernet to your antenna. The other port says data in. That's the one that goes to your PC or your router. I recommend setting up on a PC directly. If you need a USB to Ethernet adapter, that's how you would do it directly. Otherwise, use your router. Sometimes you may have problems with your router interface. So I definitely recommend making sure that a direct connection to a PC is done first, just to eliminate any possible issues. PoE injector puts power, 48 volts, into an Ethernet cable. This is the one for the Ethernet cable going to the antenna. This is the one to go to your PC. It uses a C13 power plug. We include one with our kit. It's a standard PC power cable. You might already have a bunch of these laying around. Make sure it's seated fully. Once you plug it in, it may take a second, but eventually the lights will come on. If the lights don't come on at all, ever, then you've got a bad PoE injector. You need to give us a call or email and let us know and we'll send you a replacement. For testing purposes, we're going to plug directly in here without the gland. On the other end, it's going to go right next to the LEDs to power the Invisigig inside the antenna. Now, we've already put our SIM card in here because we're already set up. So we're not worried about setup. I've already got this set up. And actually, this is a defaulted Invisigig in here, brand new. I just pulled it out of the box. But my SIM card is allowed to be used in any device, so I don't need to do anything. It's actually already on the internet before I even have a chance to plug in the other cable. That's how fast it hooks up. Got my laptop here, Ethernet adapter for USB. And on the other side, I'm going to plug in the data side. Log in. And then we'll go to my desktop and show you that I can, in fact, bring up the unit. We have Wi-Fi turned on. We're going to turn that off. And then we should see the network is identifying something here. We don't have a SIM card in currently, so no big deal. And then we're going to bring up our Invisigig interface, which is 192.168.225.1. And you can see here, my Invisigig interface does, in fact, come up. And I can look. Again, there's no SIM card in my system. You need to put a SIM card in yours to make sure that you get connected to the Internet. So if you need to set up the settings prior to putting in your SIM card, depending on what SIM plane you have, then you need to do that before you put in your SIM card. If you need to make any modifications to the settings for your specific SIM card, do that before you put in your SIM card. But you do need to make sure you put in a SIM card, power it on, and make sure it gets connected to the internet and passed through to your devices before you install this outdoors. So we can see that our system does in fact power up and it is accessible through the ethernet, PoE, the whole system, ours is working. So we're going to move on to the next step. You need to make sure that yours connects to the internet first. If you need to, you can hold it up, set it up, point it wherever you need to to get better signal to get it to connect initially. A lot of cases, if you need this setup, you probably don't get good signal indoors. So you may need to set this outside somewhere where you can ensure that before you get up on a ladder, on your roof, way up high on a tower, wherever you're installing this, you need to make sure this connects to the internet first. Ask, ask me how I know. A lot of mistakes made. Please don't make the same mistakes I made. Test it on the bench first. Get it connected. Make sure it powers. Make sure it connects. So at this point, there's two things that we need to cover. The RJ45 Ethernet sealed 
gland as well as the sim gland. We'll start with this one. So this is the rest of this, the ethernet gland that keeps water from penetrating into the ethernet plug. We obviously don't want water in there and that's what this part is for. There are a couple of parts to this. There is the lower part that has a beveled edge inside there that smashes the inner part, these little fingers, into a center split ring seal. This seal is where your cable will go through and this piece will actually crush this piece onto your cable to help provide a seal. And then your cable will come through here to your plug. In between this piece and the bulkhead itself is a rubber o-ring. Make sure you do not lose this piece. It needs to be there to completely seal. So these are the main portions. The important part inside here is the split ring seal. You have to get that out of there so that you can put it around your cable. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can generally just take an old tool or a pencil or anything and push that piece out of there carefully so it doesn't fly across the room. And just give it a just a firm little push. You can also use a screwdriver, but you don't want to use anything too sharp. And then you can peel that piece out of there. Once that's out of there, you can see that this is a split ring to put around a cable. So this would be the order that your parts go in. Now with your ethernet cable, you'll have a lot of times there'll be one of these jackets or plug covers on the end. Ours that we ship actually slides back. So you can get rid of this. You can put it out of the way if you need to. You can cut this off. If you're using one with a molded end that stays on there, you can cut the edges of that molded end to the point where it will fit through this fitting. This is why you don't need, you don't need or want this piece here. Also, this being exposed is not a big deal because it will be sealed inside of our bulkhead. So you'll place your cable through the end piece and then skip the split for now through the mid piece, this direction, not this direction. And then last, your O-ring, you'll want that to go on for sure. Okay, now you can plug this in and make sure it clicks in place. Inside this bulkhead, you wanna make sure it's secure. So it's secured, it's on there good, You've got a good connection. Next, you're going to bring this piece with the rubber O-ring all the way up and set it in place. Make sure you do not cross thread your, your threads. You wanna make sure this goes on good and straight. These two pieces do not need to be incredibly tight, just fairly snug, that's it. If this piece, the bulkhead itself, starts to turn just from you turning this, you need to open your enclosure back up and tighten the nut that's on the back side of this part. This is the same thing that's true for the SIM slot. We'll get into that next. Once these are in place, this is generally snug. You can then take your split piece, put it around your cable, and then slide this into place into these fingers. You want this piece to go into those fingers. So you'll need to do a little bit of working to push that in, and then you wanna manually push that all the way in. You do not wanna slide this in yet. You want that rubber ring to be fully seated to the tops of those fingers. Then take the last piece and thread it in place over the entire assembly. And this one does need to get snug but again not too tight you'll snug this down and that will push those fingers inward on that rubber seal around your cable you just give it a couple of good turns till it's snug and it feels like it's starting to tighten if you tighten this too much that rubber seal will grab this cable and start to spin the cable while your plug is plugged into the ethernet jack twisting off your cables from the jack end so do not over tighten this, just tighten it enough to where it feels snug and you're done. Again, 
this little piece here, you can get rid of that. You can cut it off. You can slide it all the way down, whatever you want to do. But in this case, this is the full assembly of this piece. And next, we'll talk about the SIM slot. Quick tip, if you need to disassemble this piece and you have that rubber ring stuck in the end here, you can use a screwdriver to help push that out of the place so that you don't struggle too much. Again, don't use too much pressure. Don't use anything too sharp. Be smart about it and unplug this so it's easier to work with. And you can gently push that seal out so that you can grab it and take it out. You also have to be careful with this little clip piece here. It doesn't catch on anything as you're disassembling. Simply push it down to get it off. This piece here will also grab that clip. If you have problems, you can, you can usually just wiggle it out of there. If it starts to catch on anything, remember that compressing it helps it clear. So if you have problems, you can usually do something about that. Sometimes you can push it, turn it, twist it, different ways. Just make sure you don't tear that off because you need that to ensure a good solid locked in connection here. In some cases, this sim gland might be too loose on the case. If that's true, let's say you turn your cap, you go to seal it, and it very easily spins in place inside here. You do not want that because inside this enclosure, you risk twisting this cable off or completely out. This is a very delicate piece. You can tear the PCB inside here off of the gland, or you can tear this cable off of the PCB or tear the cable off of the card end. These are pieces you do not want to damage. They are very easily damaged. So in order to avoid that, you don't want to over tighten this cap. And if you don't over tighten and it still turns very easily, you'll need to make sure that you tighten the nut on the outside of this gland. Unscrew this cap to get it out of the way. And you'll see that on the inside, there is a square piece here. And on the outside, there is a hex shaped nut on the outside. This is a one inch nut. If you happen to have a one inch socket, you can fit that right on there or a 26 millimeter socket that will fit on there. If you do not, you can use channel locks or something similar. Just be careful not to damage anything with too much pressure. Whenever you want to tighten this, what I like to do with channel locks, if I don't have a socket, is I'll find a good clear spot to grab onto the nut straight on and then tighten it, turn and tighten while on the inside I'm using my fingers to clamp down. If you need to, due to finger strength or anything else, you can put a wrench on the inside as well or another set of pliers, but be careful with two tools that you don't over tighten. This is plastic and it will break. You only need to compress the seal on the inside enough and tight enough so that it doesn't easily turn when you put the cap on and spin it. That's it. Do not over tighten this, but make sure it's tight enough to where it doesn't spin when you put your cap on and snug it on. Also, when putting your cap on, don't over tighten that. There's a rubber seal in there. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, just compressed and then squinch down just a little bit, snug down a little bit to ensure that that seal stays in place. That's it. On the back of the antenna, we have the mount surface for our antenna mount. The round side, of course, matches up with the back of the antenna. And there are four holes for the four mounting holes on the back of the antenna. You'll notice here that we have a ground symbol on the case near this hole. 
That indicates the ground point on the inside where we saw the wire attached to the case. That's, that's the point at which we want to make sure we mount this wire that comes with the kit. The mount itself has two articulating points which you can loosen up so that it can be turned left to right or up and down. The included five millimeter hex wrench can be used to loosen these. So they can be articulated however you need. This also makes it a little easier to install and especially to show you the installation from the angle that we're using. So in order to install this, we need to remember that our ground point is here. Remember where that is. And then as we put our mount to the back of the antenna, make sure that we put this piece to that same spot. You'll see on the wire, there are two different size holes. The smaller hole is to go on the mount side at the case. That is the same size as the, the bolt that we'll be using to go right through. The larger side actually goes to the U-bolts that go through the other side. It is a larger hole for the 3 8 inch threaded U-bolt. In order to mount the back to the mount, we need the longer bolts that came with the kit and the four washers. It's for the longer bolts. These are M6 bolts and the washers. Line the mount arm to the back of the enclosure. Make sure that your ground side gets its ground wire. Line up and feed the bolts down through to the threaded holes in the back of the enclosure. You do this with all four of the bolts. This can be done either on your bench before installing or if you pre-mount this to your mast or post, then you can mount this later on while it's in the air. It depends on what's easiest for your situation. Make sure you research your installation before you get too far into this. So I've only finger tightened each of the, the four bolts. I've got my ground wire attached to the proper bolt position. And if wanted, I can pre-install my U-bolts as well into the mount. Take each of the flange nuts off of the U-bolt and feed it through the back side of the mount arm. Remember to attach this to one of your four U-bolt arms or U-bolts behind the nut. To give you an idea of what this looks like, we'll align it on the same side. You just take these off the ends of the U-bolt, slide it through the appropriate position in the back of the mount arm, and then prepare the U-bolt with the nuts. These are 9 16 nuts. Put your ground arm over the U-bolt before you put the nut on. And now you've got a ground bond between the two sides of the mount arm. Now you're ready. After preparing your second U-bolt, of course, you're ready to get everything kind of cinched up. If you believe this is perfectly done for you, go ahead and take your five millimeter Allen wrench and snug down each of the four mount bolts on the back of the enclosure. In order to secure the adjustable part of the mount arm, there is the same size 5 millimeter hex to tighten this up as well. That will secure there. And we have another one here. Hopefully you can see that. Another one here for the other adjustment. And that 
We'll make everything solid so that it doesn't move when you're ready. And if it see, still if it still moves because you didn't do it tight enough, like so, tighten it further. You can make it as tight as you need. It doesn't need to be over tight. This is a high density plastic. It's very strong, but it can break. It is plastic. So you don't need to tighten it too incredibly tight, just enough to where it doesn't move anymore. And then maybe a hair more and it should be plenty tight. That, that's solid. Again, don't forget to put your other U-bolt in and ready this for installation. Once we have our mount connected, we're ready to set it up for our mast mount. I'm just gonna show you the mast mount. If you want to mount this to a flat surface, you'll need to bolt this through with whatever is necessary for your installation. Lag bolts, the proper wood screws, whatever it is that you're mounting to, make sure that you mount it properly for your application. We have U-bolts that are included with this hardware to go on a master pole. I'm gonna show you that right now. Now, now this is fully secured on here. I'll go ahead and take my U-bolts, pull the nuts off of there. Now these are flange nuts. They've got like a lock nut built in. So we don't really need any other washer. And then on the back of the antenna, make sure that you don't put these in wrong. So if we put it in like this, we'd need the pole to go in sideways, which would mount this sideways. But we're not doing that. We're gonna mount it vertically. So we put those in the proper place. And then on the back side, we put our nuts on the U-bolt. Now, the best thing to do is know how big of a mast you're gonna be using through here and pre-tighten these down to get close to whatever that size is so that you're not doing this on the pole. You can also mount this first to your pole and then mount the antenna to the antenna mount. So whatever's easiest for you, you decide. Just make sure that you're doing it as safely as possible, working on ladders and other things. Make sure that you have proper fall protection. You have someone watching you. In case there's any emergencies, you got yourself covered. We'll get our other one. And again, put these into the mount and preset everything up. I'm gonna set it down and do this now. Now, I will say, remember, in my installation, I can reach the top of my mast. It's just above the picture. So I've pre-attached my U-bolts because I can slide it over the top of my mast. If you cannot reach the top of your mast or J-pole, however you're mounting it, you won't be able to reach over the top. So you'll have to apply these U-bolts while it's on the mast. So make sure you do your research ahead of time so you don't make the mistake of pre-assembling, getting up on a ladder, and then realizing, oh, that's not gonna work. I can't fit it. In my particular case, I can put it over the top of the, bolt, the, the mast and then slide it down. Now mine is completely loosened, so it's gonna flop like this, that's fine. All I'm going to do is set it in place wherever I need it to be and tighten down the nuts on the U-bolts. Once they're finger tight, it'll generally hold. Get the second U-bolt tightened down. Once finger tightened, you can still move it. When you spin it, it will drop. If you need to move it back up, you can spin it, do a couple things to move it back up, loosen and tighten. These are 3 8 inch U-bolts, so they have a 9 16 hex nut on them. So you'll need a 9 16 wrench for this or a pair of channel locks. If you have channel locks, use them properly and tighten down as you need. Once you have your antenna mounted in the place that you need, and you know where your cell tower is, you wanna make sure that you aim the antenna in that direction. You can set 
with the same five millimeter hex wrench, the height. So if you are if you are a little lower than your cell tower, you can go with a slight upgrade. If you're up higher than your cell tower, you can go with a slight downgrade. You can set that and then tighten down the vertical aiming. And then if you need to find adjust or if this is mounted on a flat surface, you can then adjust left to right with this joint right here. Once you have that aimed properly the way you like, tighten that down and you're good to go. Now I did forget one thing. Make sure that this ground wire is connected to one behind one of these hex nuts. I did forget that on this, I'll fix it now. Okay, so now I've got my ground wire in place. You need to make sure that according to your local codes, you bond this to ground properly. That's up to you to do that. But this is now connected between the antenna backplane and the mounting point at your mast, wherever you're mounting. Make sure you bond that to ground properly. It's not 100% needed for the operation of the antenna, but for electrical safety, you need to make sure you follow your local electrical codes for proper grounding and bonding. Once you're all set and ready to go, make sure that you've got your SIM card entered in. Then make sure you insert your Ethernet cable through your SIM gland properly like we showed. Connect it all up and then secure your cabling properly for your installation. I hope that was informative, showing you everything you need to know about the Invisigig quad link antenna. Remember, this isn't just for the Invisigig. You can use this with routers that have modems in them. Uh, it's best that your router has a plastic shell or some form of ventilation fan on it in order to deal with heat so that it can dissipate the heat into the case and then out aspirating through the case. If your router has a metal enclosed case on it, you probably want to remove that, but it can be used with routers as well as cellular routers as well as the Invisigig. If you have any questions on how to make your connection as best as possible with the quad link antenna make sure to shoot us a message or an email and we'll get back to you as soon as we can i hope you enjoy your quad link antenna and i hope you have the fastest internet out of everybody around you this has been richard with the wireless haven take care